I'm so excited to be in the building with y'all. I've got a great word today. We are ending our series. How many of y'all have loved the series of Players and Pretenders? I don't know, but I'm kind of partial to our series because I just love our series because every single month we're doing something that if you are dedicated to this season of your life of growth, you will see an exchange where God does do amazing things. God created you to live in abundance. Say abundance. God created me to not be petty. God created me to live in abundance. God did not create me to live in lack. He created me to live in abundance. He created me to, some of y'all settling. Because you got so used to settling that now you just settle. That's what you do. you just settling. Some of y'all lived your whole life to retire. Why are you ready to retire? What you going to do when you retire? God created you for more. And it ain't never too late to get up and get going. Ever. Say never. never. It is never too late for me to start again. Ever. God allows U-turns. But our job is to get rid of the junk that is holding us back. Baggage ain't baggage unless you hold on to it. Right? So today, I want to talk about, say, don't derail my destiny. Don't derail my destiny. Nobody can stop your destiny, but who? Who? Your ex can't do it. Your mama can't do it. Your pastor can't do it. Your coach can't do it. Your doctor can't do it. Your boss can't do it. Why? Because why? You are a grown-up, which means at any moment you can realize that the power that you possess is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, right? And so once you realize this girl is on fire or this boy is on fire and you realize that I'm about to get up out of this thing and I'm flying, right? Right? So today I want to talk about, so, so Apostle Ramon preached y'all's butt off on the first week of this, of this month. Then I preached, started, I preached on Hannah. Remember Hannah? We talked about Hannah. Y'all got blessed on Hannah, right? Sweet little Hannah. Then I talked about what last week? Huh? I'm about to be Oprah up in here. I'm about to be RTK Oprah. Every time y'all remember what I preach, I'm going to throw some cards at you. Y'all hear me? Y'all don't know what I'm about to do up in here, but I love when y'all listen and y'all activate it. That's why I love the Brag on God series. Man, like we bragged on God and we saw miracles. Last week we talked about David. We talked about how David got with Bathsheba. And woo! It was like Housewives of Jerusalem all up in here. It was cray cray. And today I want to talk about a man who derailed his destiny. Guess who we talking about? Who? Who? Saul. Say, come on, King Saul. So we're going to talk about Saul. This is how we're going to end, players and pretenders. So let me build the story for you. So Saul, and all of these sermons that me and Apostle preached, we talked about how it ain't never too late. It doesn't matter if you were a player, pretender, and a player. Because we all go through bad seasons, right? We all go through, we all go through seasons where we loyal to a mistake. Anybody been loyal to a mistake? You're like, oh God, I'm dead. But you loyal to a mistake. You letting all these people that ain't living, they, you letting people that ain't even ever tied your shoelace. They ain't never been in your shoes, tie your shoelaces. Right? Instead of getting with God and let God get you out of the mess that you got yourself in that is not taking him by surprise. Like he already knew you were gonna be crazy. Before you were born, he already knew. He's like, whoa, this was going to keep her mama on her knees. <laughs> she going to wear out everybody, but she going to get it together about 40, right? Right? I always say this. When you came out of your mama, the doctors heard, what? But hell. <laughs> the hell, hell heard purpose, destiny, a game changer, a nation shoot. This one is going to take a lick and keep on ticking. This one is going to figure it out. And when she figures it out, or he figures it out, woo, they gonna go from the black sheep to the goat. That's how our God rolls, baby. So we talk about Saul. He began well. He started delivering Israel from their enemies. He was the tallest, most handsome. Everything seemed to be going for him, naturally and spiritually. 
And the Bible says he was the most handsome man in all of Israel. He is the tallest guy. He is the most handsome guy. He was physically strong. I bet he had like 12 abs. <laughs> he's got good looks. And all of that, and he still got good character. He ain't cocky. He ain't feeling like when he walks in a room, I just arrived. Y'all know those people. Whenever I say player, how many of y'all, I ain't talking about the Urban Dictionary either. I'm talking about player, like, they, they, they doing what you want them to do. Like, you doing what you, they, 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 they like killing life. That's a player. Somebody that's walking with God, doing God's purpose. So when I say player, how many of y'all think of somebody? Somebody comes in your head that's really killing life. They're doing life. They, they, they're like, man, I wish I could, like, get halfway of what they got, right? But when I say pretender, how many of you think of a pretender? Y'all know y'all be thinking of like 12 people just now. Y'all thought of one player and 12 pretenders. We all do it. Why? Because the enemy always wants us to concentrate on the negative instead of the positive. Right? That's how come y'all like, oh, I got haters. You got 12. But there's 7.7 .7 billion people in this world. You got like 1,800 people on your block. But you won't never go to them because you're concentrating on the haters. That's what we do. Instead of allowing ourselves to be used of God, we will allow ourselves to get stuck on the little things in our lives. But, that, but, but Saul didn't do that. Saul was humble. Saul was a player. He was, he was just awesome. He, he looked like one of those people. You ever seen those people that they like, have a kid and then they go right back to snatched in two hours and you're like what I look at my husband need a sneaker and I'm like five pounds or you look at those people that they just got the most beautiful hair and you're looking at them on social media and you're like oh my god they're a hair I just long to have hair like that you're putting mayonnaise and oil in your hair every week to try to get your hair like that it is so not a real hair it's not real hair <laughs> but all of a sudden we find ourselves Looking at these kind of people and thinking, man, you got it going on. Like, the day God created you, oh, he was so bored. He gave you everything perfect, even the perfect lips. Everything is perfect on that person. And I'm over here with a five-finger forehead and a big old butt in my nose, and he was definitely busy the day he was creating me. Well, that was how Saul was. Saul was so perfect. God had just given him everything on the spiritual side, on the character side. He was called by God, literally chosen by God. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He was humble. He was wise. He was capable. He was influential. He just had the whole package. But eventually, God's plan for this man's life completely derailed. Completely derailed. He ended up filled with fear jealousy rage he became deceitful conniving and even demonized at the very end guess what he did he took his own life me and Mimi were talking about this in the car yesterday I said don't you think it's so crazy how we ain't got none of our legends because I'm totally about to age myself <laughs> I'm 50 in three months but how do we not have Michael Jackson? Where he at? Prince? Whitney Houston? Ugh. Like all these great people that look like they had it going on. They had the greatest life. And every one of them ended because they couldn't handle the call of God on their life. Where did it go wrong? Where did it go wrong in your life? It went wrong in Saul's life. We will look at four ways today where he went the wrong way. How did he get off course when everything in his life was so perfect? I'm going to give these to you quick because I totally did not give them in the first service. And I want to make sure you can write these down. The destiny God has for you should not be derailed. And y'all listen to me. Even if you find yourself derailed, you can get back on the track. 
because God allows U-turns. This whole month, all we've been doing is talking about heart posture, character. Here's number one, to stay on the right track. We must remain patient. We must remain patient. Number two, we must remain small in our own eyes. I had this friend one time, and I was on Preachers of Atlanta, and I would always go and I would do interviews at this place, radio interviews, and me and him both were just kind of, men. we were taking off together, and, and God, we were both like pinching ourselves, and I remember um, him asking me a question. He was like, how do you stay so level? How, do, how does this not go to your head? He was like, you couldn't even hardly get up here today without people stopping you for pictures. And he said, how are you handling this? I said, handling what? He said, this, your whole world's changed. And I said, but really has it? Because I haven't changed. And as long as I don't change and I don't let my heart get so puffed up in who I am, then I ain't going nowhere. See, when we start allowing what we have and what God's blessed us with to get inside of us, that's when we mess up our life. And he said, how do you handle it? And I was like, handle what? I don't feel like anything's different. I never allowed myself to get to a place where I felt like I was above anybody else. And I always remembered I'm a servant first. I am the leader of this church and I will I will serve you before you serve me. That's why I walk in with my own computer. Because I got two hands and two feet. And you're not here to serve me. You're here to serve the world. We're here to win people to Jesus. That's what we're put on this earth for. I went back a couple of months ago, and I was so disappointed. Because this person, I was like, where's my friend? We both had elevated. God had done great things in our lives. But all of a sudden, he literally did not even walk into that interview until the moment that the, 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 the light came on. Because he was bigger than me. And when he sat down in that chair, not necessarily, but, you know, he was bigger than everybody in the building. And I was like, I'm really disappointed that you allowed what God blessed you with to make you think you did it. It ain't in, it, you didn't do nothing. There ain't nothing in me more special than anybody else. It said, God, trust me. And God trusted you. Showing up a few months later, lost everything. Why? Because his ego got in, in front of his humbleness. So the heart posture here is to ask yourself, how's my heart? What is my motive here? Why is my marriage going to hell in a handbasket? Why, why am I allowing pride to get me to not want to say I'm sorry? What, what am I going to get off of this? What, being mad at this is only because I feel like something was taken from me. But really, in reality, if all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, then why do I care who gets the credit? So we see here, you got to remain patient. You've got to remain small in, in your own eyes. Number three, God uses those who aren't too high and mighty in their own eyes. He uses people that are quick to admit when we are wrong and quick to change. He uses people that rejoice when others are honored. How do you feel when you see somebody that you don't think deserves something get it? Saul was very patient when he started. But he didn't stay that way. Samuel poured all this oil over his head, told him there would be confirming signs, and he makes his very specific predictions. He is, God is so cool that sometimes he's got to knock us upside our heads. He's like, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, just so you know. And some of y'all still question it. He told, he told Saul, Samuel told Saul, he said, Somebody's going to come to you and he's got three goats. This other guy's going to come with three loaves of bread. And one guy's going to come with wine, wine of skin. And they're going to give you two loaves of bread. And then as soon as they hand you the two loaves of bread, these prophets are going to come out and they're going to prophesy. 
Why? Let me tell you why. Because Saul was such a servant to his father. He worked out on the field. He was out there, man in the sheep, working in the dirt, all of these things. And all of a sudden, they wake up one day, and all of the animals have escaped from his father, Cash's house. So he sends Saul to go find his animals. While he's on a hunt to find his animals, he runs into Samuel. Now, the way we get here in the story is that the Israels, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, children of Israel are at a place where Samuel has been their king. He's been their, 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 their king. They're the only ones without a God, a king. So Samuel is the one that's leading them. Well, Samuel is getting up in age and ready to retire. And so the only people in, in Samuel's bloodline is his two sons, and they were ratchet. So they couldn't take over the bloodline. They weren't ready. And so all of a sudden, he says, well, God will lead you. They're like, no, we want to be like everybody else. And we want to have us a king. Again, here we are, getting out of position. We're not patient. So God tells Samuel, find a king. Samuel, all of a sudden, knows who this person is supposed to be by the looks. This good looking, everything going for him. And Samuel is up praying in the mountains. And here comes Saul. And he says, have you seen these animals running everywhere? And Samuel goes, they're safe. But I need to ordain you king. What am I saying here? I'm saying that God will use a mishap in your life. The animals had to get free in order for Saul to go find Samuel. He will use that divorce to get you to a place where you can humble yourself before the Lord. Some of y'all were too cocky. And he had to humble you. He had to humble you so that he could get you in position to do what God's called you to do. So he'll take that situation that looks like it's going to take you out. And he'll say, I'm going to allow you to make the mistakes because sometimes I let the plans wreck your life so that you can find out who the rock is at the bottom, which is me. And then I'm going to lift you up out of the place that you think is going to kill you. If those animals would not have gotten out, Saul would have not been on a hunt for the animals and Samuel would not have been able to ordain him king. He says, I'm ordaining you king. See, y'all thought it was too late. It ain't too late. He uses the hell you going through. But you can't waste the hell. You got to stop praying for God to get you out of what you're in and you got to begin to pray, God, let me see what I need to change while I'm here. Because I got some free life college. So Samuel goes, Samuel goes, I'm about to anoint you king. He goes, <laughs> you can't anoint me king. I ain't a nobody. I'm so, I don't, I, I don't even know Jesus like that. What do you mean? Like I'm a dropout. I work at my dad's field. I am a nobody. And Saul goes, I mean, Samuel goes, oh, but you somebody. You saw, you the next king of Israel. The first king of Israel was a shepherd that was looking for his dad's animals. And he gets ordained. Now, let me tell you the story now. Now we can go to 1 Samuel 10, 14. I had to set it up for y'all so y'all ain't lost. Y'all like, all right, but why did he go to, I hate that. Don't you hate that? I need details. <laughs> so it says in 1 Samuel 10, 14, now remember, he goes to the mountain and he sees, he sees uh, a Samuel. It's just him and Samuel in this exchange. He says, oh, what did he say? His uncle asked. This was after he went back home. Saul's uncle asked him and his servant. We were looking for the donkeys, Saul replied, but we couldn't find them. So we went to Samuel to ask him where they were. Oh, says the uncle. And what did he say? His uncle asked. He told us that the donkeys had already been found. Hmm. That's all he said? He didn't give them back to you? Don't you hate that? When you're trying to be incognito? And they're like, what? Tell me more. I need details so I can pray for you. But Saul replied. But Saul didn't tell his uncle what Samuel said about the kingdom. Blood thicker than water. Some of y'all need to stop telling everything. 
Because I don't know of anybody to talk you out of what God's going to do in your life but your family. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You can't go full-time ministry, Kim. You got to bomb care now. You got to have that insurance you ain't never used. Oh, no, no, no. You ain't qualified to do that. Oh, you can't write no book. Who's going to read your book? But some of us tell people because we want the support. And we're walking in life trying to fight these generational curses by the same people that put them on us. And the enemy is using the very people that you never got validation from because hurt people hurt people. And now you're over here stuck saying, if my own mom and daddy don't support me, who gonna support me? If my own mom and daddy don't see it, then who? God. And wherever you're missing validation from, the enemy will use that situation to keep your tail stuck. But see, we see here, Saul didn't tell him. Saul didn't say nothing. Paul didn't say a word of what happened to him. He was so humble. Saul was so humble. He was wise enough to allow the fruit of his calling to speak for itself. See, here's another thing I learned. If you got to tell people who you are, you ain't nobody. I'm Pastor Kim. No, you ain't. I remember when I got ordained. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't wait. My daddy was ordaining me. I got ordained with elders over here. Oh, I just was. Oh, I, I, I was somebody. I was going to get me a robe. I got the whole certificate. And I was going to get to go full-time ministry. But I got a real big reality check the next day when I had to be at Bloomingdale's at 9 o'clock. They don't care about your title. Why? Because your fruit speaks for itself. How did this happen? How did, how did Saul... Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So he, he, he goes, he never says a word. Nobody knows he got, he got a, a, a ordained king. And then we see in 1 Samuel 10, 24 through 26, which I'm going to let y'all go read yourself. Basically, it paraphrases it. Samuel said to all the people he became, he announced to the, the little group, the little Fayetteville, Georgia group, and said, this is the man that the Lord has chosen. All y'all wanted a king. Well, here you go. This is the king that we've chosen. No one, there's no one in the world like him. Man, Saul was getting built all the way up. And all the people started shouting, long live the king. Long live the king. Rah, rah, rah. Then all of a sudden, as soon as this is over, the king, they got a king. They praising him. You know what he does? You know what Saul does? Goes back to the field. He still humbled himself. He goes back to the field, and he begins to serve. He went back to work for his dad's livestock, humble and patient to let God open the doors for him. Then we read in 1 Samuel eleven five. 5. Saul had been plowing a field with his oxen, and when he returned to town, he asked, what's the matter? Why is everyone crying? So they told him about the message from Jabosh. He organizes an army. Now listen, nobody knows yet he's king, really, except just his little people. And all of a sudden, they start having a tizzy. That's why y'all got to be careful. People will push you into a place that you don't belong yet. I need it. I need to go. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm a king. I, I, I'm a pastor. I'm an author. Let me hurry up. They're putting the pressure on me. When are you going to start? When are you going to start? When you, why do you care? Why do you care? Why are you so in my business? What's your motive? Why is you on your knees for yourself? Ah, because messy attracts messy. And that's what we see here. He organizes an army when he hears of the trouble because all of a sudden all these people come to him and say, oh, they're coming after us. There's a whole ruckus. We need you to do something now, 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 now. So what do you do? He goes to Samuel. Samuel, what are we going to do about this? Samuel said, no big deal. That's why you need strong accountability. <laughs> Pull you off the rope. Go back to your place. I'll meet you in seven days. Seven days. Oh, my God, what's going to happen in seven days? Seven? Yes. Go back to what you were doing, and in seven days, I'm going to meet you on the mountain, and we're going to pray, and we're going to prophesy, and we're going to fight our way through this. So what did he do? All of a sudden, we see 
that he got ahead of Samuel. Samuel didn't move quick enough. Samuel wasn't validating him the way he thought he should. Because his flesh got a little taste of glory. Hail to the king! Hail to the king! I bet you he's out there in the heat. Oh, God, kings don't scoop up manure. Because the enemy will always get you at your weakest point. When you're sweating, when you're hot, when you're desperate, when you feel like you ain't got another answer, you begin to step in and help God help you in a bad way. So 1 Samuel eleven fifteen 15 says, So they all went to Galgal, and in a solemn ceremony before the Lord, they made uh, Saul king. So basically, right here, we see that Samuel gave King Saul a, a whole TMZ welcome to kingdomness. At that moment, we start seeing him change. How did Saul even get here? How did he become publicly honored as king when he was just a shepherd boy? You ready for this? First, he was privately called and anointed. He was heralded by someone else with a good reputation and a fruitful ministry. Instead of jumping into relationships with people, single people, stop just looking and listening to them and ask questions to their friends. Who are their friends? You don't know about this book company that you're about to sign with? Go ask some of their authors. Because all of a sudden, this man is brought to the top because of someone seeing something in him that have great respect. That's why y'all got to stop. You can't just let nobody lay hands on you. We used to let people walk around this church laying hands on everybody. Devil laying hands on devils. You can't be doing that. You got to know them by their fruit because devils are transferred. You listen to me. This is why some of y'all in your fifth marriage, I am not, look, I am singing to the choir. I ain't been married five times, but I've had two. You can't keep needing validation from people that are not valid in your life. You got to stop and take, stop taking constructive criticism from people that ain't never constructed nothing. And begin to get on your knees and let God begin to heal you from the inside out. Begin to ask God. Stop repeating the same cycles. Find you somebody in your life that will look at you and say, sit down. I got so many people in my life. My, my spiritual father, Pastor Rod Parson, Kimberly, don't do it. I saw that post. What was your motive? None of your biswax. Take it down. Yes, sir. My mama, girl, I'm just telling you right now how it looks. Take it down. And then when I really start getting too messy, God will shut a whole Facebook down. You hear me? When I start letting what they're doing to me get inside of me, God's like, oh, no, 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 no. Let me shut your life down because this is poison and you've come too far. And I can't let your petty tail get in the way of where I'm taking you y'all sometimes God will wreck your plans because your plans are about to wreck you if you would do it for yourself he wouldn't have to wreck you but a lot of times we allow it to get inside of us and we become a little haughty when we don't get that validation that we want from our parents or from that pastor or somebody you let a few five people start clapping for you. And then all of a sudden, you off base. Now you're over here being Saul, letting it go to your head when God had you in front of thousands. Always check who honors the people that you are giving your life to. Who is your spouse's to be accountability? Can't nobody tell me. Well, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> the people that you look up to, who do you see honoring them? Because birds of a feather flock together. 
I just saved some of y'all $15,000 in therapy bills from wisdom, common sense. Common sense ain't always there. You got to get around some people with common sense. He was heralded. He was privately called heralded. And then, his, then, then your fruit, your works and your fruit speak for themselves. Saul has been so patient, but something changes. Samuel told Saul, go to Gilgal. We'll make a sacrifice. Saul wasn't willing to wait. He wasn't allowed to offer the sacrifice because it wasn't his calling. What does that mean? Stay in your doggone lane. Stay in your lane. He's over here trying to be prophet, peace, doctor, LLV, Kojic, Pentecostal, everything. He's trying to be everything. When God had called him for this lane. So all of a sudden, he gets impatient, oversteps his boundaries. He says, I am king, but I can also be a priest. And in his impatience, he stepped over that line, and it cost him the kingdom. Y'all know how many people in my life are probably still going to therapy because of me? Some therapies are get, therapists are getting rich off who you used to be. Because you got ahead of God how many times? But thank God, an act of surrendering and allowing him to shut stuff out of your life when it needs to be shut off and not allowing it to get in you, but moving forward. I don't believe that it was this one event that brought judgment to Saul because it says that God took his hand off of Saul. <sighs> He's a mean, mean father. How many times do we create our own storms and get mad at God because he didn't fix it? I don't believe it was this one event that brought judgment to Saul, but it was symbolic. It was a few symbolic events of what had been happening over time. And guess what happened? Over time, his heart had gotten hardened. It was several events over time. His heart got hardened and his outward impatience, oh my God, it started drifting all around him and his heart became hardened and away from God. Jesus says in scripture, in our patience, we process our souls. Patience. Don't get weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. What, 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 what ain't on the calendar? Huh? Due season. It ain't on the calendar. It's when you keep your heart right. It's coming. Y'all, it's coming. I remember a season when I was young. My kids were young. And my then husband had more anointing in his fingertip than I had in my entire body. Anointed. Everything he touched literally blew up. He could make the choir that sounded like, whew, joyful noise. He could make it a heavenly joyful noise. He had anointing. And he wanted so bad, you can play with me, Ralph. He wanted so bad to be elevated like he saw himself more pastoring than in music and he goes and he sits down with our pastor and he says I really feel like God's called me to this blah 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 the pastor was like you know what I just was talking to the other leaders and you are exactly right we see it in you we see it you could be the next one to take this church because there's no kids to take it but here's what God wants me to tell you this is the word from God. You understand? We were like, yes, sir. He said, it's not time. What? It's not time? Do you know how old we are? We were like 24. <laughs> and we were both like, yes, sir, we hear you. It's coming. We're headed that way. But the position's not open yet, but it will be. Just sit tight. 
Two weeks later, we resigned. <laughs> Do you know how many stories I got of being impatient? One was when I was at Pastor Rod Parsons in Bible school. And he said, don't you dare, don't you dare marry him. He's going to derail your destiny. What did I do? Y'all tell me. Huh? Derailed my destiny. Did I end it? No, because look at God. Won't he will. But it took 25 years to get there. I didn't preach my first sermon until I was 40. I could have been, I could have been taking up world harvest. But I derailed my destiny. I wouldn't listen and I wasn't patient that church two weeks right after we left two or three weeks later opening and we were nowhere to be found and that's when sin creeped in and we started nay nay and not pray praying but thank you God that we allow that I allow what was in me to get healed so I didn't keep repeating those cycles now I want to scream from the mountaintops. Don't do it. Just wait. Just, just, just hold on. I promise to God it's coming. Just wait. Hardly ever do they wait. Why? Because we get a little bit of our voids filled. We want it now. I want my book published now. I want that husband now. I want that wife now. I want my kids to act right now. And so we get tired of doing what's right. Saul apologized, but only because he was forced. When you gotta be backed into a corner before you apologize, you better listen. He apologized, but God didn't take his hands off of him. And I'm going to tell y'all something. God will use people even after he takes his hands off of them. You ever seen those people living like the devil, but yet they're still me pastor mega churches? It's because people will listen. Because they like their character, their char charisma, but they ain't caring about their character. God will use you even when he takes his hand off of you. Because if it's going to help people get to Jesus, they can't help it that you're living all sloppy behind closed doors, messing up stuff, sowing discord. They don't, he, they don't care. They just care that God just cares that you're bringing them to Jesus. But when that little trumpet blows and the skies part, because they're going to And he says, depart from me, I ain't never knew you. Half the saints behind him are going to be like, what? Every Sunday I served there. Depart from me. I never knew you. Your character stinks. Your heart is nasty. People see your deeds, but I saw your heart. Boom, shaka, laka, laka, boom. Y'all, I'm proof that you can be a song. You can be a player, pretender, and go back a player. That God can take your mistakes and make it a message. That God, listen, that God can take your scars and turn them to stars. I am proof that God can take and do in your life in nine years what you couldn't have done in 19,000 years doing the right thing. Even if I'd have stayed at Pastor Rod Parsley's, I believe that God knew it was going to happen. And he said, I'm going to allow you at 40 years old because it's going to win more people to Jesus after you were ratchet. You're going to be able to win more, Kim, more people, Kim, because you walked through some failed marriages. Because you finally got it right and quit. And got saved for real. And stopped playing church. And you started fearing me. And you started living what you're preaching. That's what God is saying to you today. You can stand on your feet. What in your life do you need to let go of? Don't let what they've done to you get in you. God ain't taking his hand off your life. Well, what if he has? That's what y'all gonna email me today. Keep your emails. 
leave Valerie alone. I think God's taken his hands off of my life like he did Saul. No, he hasn't. He took his hand off of Saul because Saul couldn't apologize. And because Saul got too big for his britches. Anytime God ever took his hands off of somebody apostle, it was when they thought they were as good as God. It's when you need to sit on that front row to feel validated. It's when you need to be on a platform or you need to be celebrated. You need to, you need to be literally celebrated by somebody more than God. You're going to settle for a crown on earth when God wants to give you 12 in heaven. How do you know when you're in the right place? They're pushing you to your destiny. Some of y'all need to go home today and do some inventory on your friends. And don't make no announcement. <laughs> Pastor Real Talk Cam told me I could just delay. Because y'all crazy. No, you crazy. Everybody crazy in your life. Everybody that you were in relationship, all of them are going to a therapist because they're crazy. Maybe you decide to go bad. <laughs> and making them crazy. It's saying, Lord, I surrender. All of me wants all of you, and I want you to do in my life. I don't want y'all, y'all, y'all looking at these people on social media as gods. They ain't no more leading you to Jesus, but they lead you to a dollar bill. They're feeding your urge to be somebody. When they ain't a nobody. Mad at the world. You know how you know when somebody's mad that you following? Ain't nobody following them for real. They're following what they can do for them. You know what loneliness is? When you got a million people following you, but they ain't following you, they following what you can do for them. That's a lonely place to live. When you love me for what I can give you, God removes them always out of my life. And I'm so thankful. And I let them go. And I love you. And I love you more than anything in this world. But you got to go. Today, get your heart right. Limitless. Online. TikTok. Twitter. Instagram. Limitless family. Get your heart right. Stop needing validation from people and look to God. Stop trying to build your platform and build you and he'll build your platform. You ain't got to beg, borrow, steal, buy, pimp yourself, lose your dignity, sleep with nobody. You ain't got to do nothing. When God is on your life, he will elevate you facts. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I just heard the Lord say, stop saying you don't want something that you want. Some of y'all are talking out of hurt. I don't really want this. I don't really want to get married again. I don't really want a million dollars. I don't really, y'all lying. I don't really want to ever be nothing. You are lying. I don't need nobody. I don't care what people think about me. Yes, you do. You care. We're human. You are not an igloo. We care. We have feelings. So we got to get free so that we got to walk around saying stuff like that so that we can be the change that God needs us to be in this world. Deal? Y'all going to do it? Y'all ready to y'all ready to roll? Y'all ready to roll? You ready to let go of what they did to you? You ready to let let all that pride go? Everybody lift up your hands. Say Father, I surrender. I quit talking about everybody. And I start praising you. Forgive me for anything in my heart that has stopped my destiny. Jesus, 
let me put you first let me put you first give me a craving for you give me a hunger for you let me stop filling voids with things and people and let me realize that you chose me to be a world changer a hell shaker in a good way a hope dealer and you with skin on radically shift me renew me take me out of my own way in Jesus name surprise me this week God give me a pinch myself season fill the void Jesus fill the void fill the void so that we don't reach for things to fill voids that ain't of you now say this with me Lord I pray blessings over every person that has hurt me, slandered me, lied on me, and left me for dead. I won't let what they did to me get into me. In Jesus' name. World, get ready. I'm back.